What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, 20 d 2 Wild checking in once again, back with a review of the upcoming Jordan 9 Powder Blue. to also throw into the video that we got some new pickups from represent clothing they actually just opened up their vault right now on february 21st and i believe it closes on march 8th and this is a good opportunity to pick up some of their good items at a very very low price when it comes to some of their very luxury garments so we got some items here this is a mushroom represents clothing sweatpants in medium and we went ahead and grabbed a jersey in mushroom uh, owners club hoodie jersey and large as well the vault has items up to 70 percent off so keep that in mind and as i stated before represent clothing is always good on their garments very very high quality very very upper echelon in my opinion these sweatpants i own a couple different colors already and i wanted to pick something that's a little bit more neutral as we transition into that springtime something i can still wear that's still kind of dark because i like my you know i like my dark clothing overall as well very very heavy but something that's heavy enough to keep you nice and cozy in the winter, but also cool in the summer. You have the represent running on the pant leg, and this is actually popped out in this nice 3D printing. It says the owner's club on it. Some of them I have have different types of labeling. This one's a little bit different than some of the ones I actually own. You have the represent pocket also with the little metal right there. And I picked this one up in medium. Next up, we got a hoodie to go along with it in large, pretty much just matched it. The reason why I matched everything up, you'll see what we got here as well. But this is a hoodie. I own a couple of their hoodies. I like their hoodies a lot. Another heavy overall piece. We are still, you know, in spring. It's gonna be windy through March and April. So it's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. On the back, you got that same 3D print on the back there, popped out, debossed, if you wanna call it that, or just popped out and textured in 3D. Represent clothing, owner's club, also on there as well. So I got the top and bottom if I wanna just really just, you know, drape it out and keep everything in a monotone colorway. Now. This is a re-release of a very, very popular shoe of theirs. And I wanted something else that was neutral. Now, these colors might not match this one in particular, like perfect, but it's a good shoe overall that will just match with a lot of different things because it's a neutral color. And that is the Studio Sneaker in gray. So once again, I like my big chunky shoes still to this day. Specifically, if I want to go for the more echelon look at the end of the day, I like what Represent brings out with their Bullies, um, with their Rapt Raptors, I believe, the Raptor Lows. I own a couple pairs of those. Something that I can rock streetwear-wise, but also if I want to just wear like a nice little blazer or a button-up, it kind of goes along with anything. Now, these are more so, I would say, on the higher upper echelon luxury type of streetwear, but also designer look if you want to go along with it. Because as I stated before, I think that Represent clothing is a very good fine line of streetwear but then also designer in my opinion because of the quality of the garments the price point can be a little bit left and right depending on what you go for but you're going to get quality along with it very very chunky sole right here on these bad boys all upper leather you got the nice big popped out r on the tongue as well as on the back and the outsole you had that translucent outsole with that r on there as well the bully is very close to this shoe i would say also because i own the bully in green and i own something very another bully in orange but i believe this is my first this might be one of my first if not like the second studio sneaker that i own from them but the leather quality magnificent Smells good as well. Smells like some legitimate leather and made in Portugal. Representclo.com. And these are actually in a size eight and a half. You can go true to size when it comes to their sneakers. So, I mean, they're not that off. So I could probably style it with this one as well. But there's some denims. There's pretty much anything I want to do at the end of the day when rocking these bad boys. So check them out down below in the description. A lot of this stuff may also be in that vault but the vault ends on march 8th if you ever liked anything for represent clothing it's your time now to go and check it out up to 70 percent off you go to their website the vault will show you right there and it'll say shop now it's a little vault it's dope and enjoy that because definitely a brand aside from my very own 
I rock with them. You guys know I rock with them. So go check them out. Let's go check them out. Guys, today we have the Jordan 9 Powder Blue set to release on March 23rd for a retail price point of $210. The Jordan 9 was originally released back in 1994. The Powder Blue, of course, showing that tribute and respect to the UNC Tar Heels Jordan's College, where he also was a champion as well. The Jordan 9 was designed by Tinker Hatfield, and the design itself was encapsulated by an international theme that Tinker Hatfield and Mark Smith wanted to tell, and they started that off with the outsole itself. The outsole tells a story of the phenomenal phenom that Michael Jordan was to the whole entire world, not just the US. You know, people like Kobe and LeBron have you know, amassed a huge following internationally just as much as they have in America. But Jordan was the beginner. Like, Jordan was the one that popped that off and people will still to this day argue that he was and still is the biggest phenom or international athlete, especially in the basketball world. Now, Kobe, he definitely did have it in China. He definitely was big in there as well. But Jordan, he was the beginning of that phenom. I want to make a quick correction that I stated on the last video on the Got Em Early. The Jordan 9 was designed as a basketball sneaker, and from what I read and have done research on, it was designed when Jordan was still in the league. It just came out when he once had retired. This is a shoe, as stated, that released in 94, but was designed in 93 when Jordan still was in the league at the time. It wasn't until the retirement that the shoe then had also came out and was also featured on Space Jam. Technically, the only time that Jordan wore them on the court, you know, you know, certain type of way because Jordan never wore these he never wore the Jordan 9 on the court he did wear them on the field in baseball when playing with the Barons in the minor league however other athletes out there did rock the Jordan 9 Penny Hardaway had the Jordan 9 he even wore them as a PE of his own so they have been on the feet of numerous basketball players out there the shoe itself though encapsulates that international feel and theme having various languages out there and various quotes for MJ's ethos from dedicated to independence, it tells a story of the international icon that Jordan himself was. And with that great design and just something very different for the outsole of a sneaker, they still had to make sure that it had the technology and traction to give a great court feeling. Now the Jordan 9 Powder Blue released in 94, I believe it was like February 1st, 1994. I, I Look, if you want to bash me for not knowing that specific date, go for it. But the retail at the time was $124. They have since then re-released back in 2010, and this is the second time it's been retroed in 2024. So it's only been two times since we've seen the powder blue being brought back out to the general public. A very, very, in my opinion, solid colorway. I love the whites, the baby blues, or the UNC blues in the black. It has a very nice pop to it. The box says Air Jordan 9 Retro, Summit White slash Black, size eight and a half. We talked about Barclays and how Barclays were just, it's really hard to actually put them on, right? That's not really an issue for some reason when it comes to the nines. I don't have that issue. You have that inner booty on the shoe, but it does not play the same role as the Barkley does for some odd reason. I'm able to slip straight into these shoes at the end of the day. Now on the inside of the shoe, it does feature the Nike Air and not the Jumpman logo inside there. It's playing tribute to that original 1994 model, as well as no 23 on the back. The 23 on the back was a new iteration for Jordan 9s later down the road, but originally they did not have the 23 on the back. Same with the Jordan 5, if you remember Jordan 5s, uh, they originally did not have that 23, but then later on they had the two threes on the side and stuff like that. Um, that was something at the time that was, uh, you know, as stated, just different. It was not there. So some people were asking about that uh, 23. No, there is no 23 logo on there. There is the Jumpman logo and all that, but it is going more towards its original mold and model at the end of the day. I really do like these a lot. I think these look fantastic. As far as the leather goes, when it comes to nines, they always have a really stiff type of leather. And I, I say it's like more like a plasticky, unfortunately, but it doesn't, it doesn't feel horrible. It doesn't feel like cheap. It just feels tough. And if you want a good comparison of what that thick type of leather is, to believe it or not, like it reminds me a lot of the leather utilized on the 85 highs that we see on the Jordan 1. So keep that in mind. That's kind of what it reminds me of at the end of the day. I think overall it's a solid shoe. Currently going pretty high in the resale market. So that means that the demand may be there, maybe not. Jordan 9s have been 
one of those shoes that get looked over. You know, when you go to the one to 14, you know the big boys, the nines, the tens are some of the shoes that people kinda, some people love, some people don't care for. The nines, the tens, that's usually, they're still good. They're not like twos, but they are sometimes iffy. You know, I love the nine. This shoe, been looking forward for this to come out. Looking forward towards the olive nines we're gonna get a little bit later on as well. So I've been really looking forward to this. A really nice overall colorway. The black pops, panties drop nonstop. Comes in that old school 1990. I wanna say like this is like the 95 box. So this box actually matches this particular shoe probably pretty well. I, I can't recall what exact box. Someone in the comments in 1994 when I was three years old, feel free to let me know, um, you know what box it came in. Cause I wanna say like this box, and we've seen this box a lot. Like this box is, this box, the all gray boxes, these are all more old school boxes. They kind of went back in time and been pulling designs from those older boxes rather than, you know, a couple years back, we just had those black boxes with the gold jump man or the black box with the white Jordan jump man. Now we're actually getting like retro boxes. And let me know guys, is this the box that this shoe originally released in, in 1994? Because from what I know, and I always remembered from doing YouTube, this was a 95 box. I don't know if, 94 was the same box or there was a 94 box this let me know i'm just curious just curious but i love y'all i appreciate y'all as always march 23rd retail 210 they're looking pretty good as far as like you know you might want to get up at 10 a.m and get on top of it sizing wise it's pretty good eight and a half they don't need to go up and have, I, I feel good in eight and a half i don't need a nine so yeah i'm in you guys and girls off with an on foot review i love y'all i'm out peace